Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another video review. But before I get started, I need you guys to do me a favor. If you're watching this video right here and are not a subscriber to Patriot Prime Reviews, please hit that subscribe button right now. It won't cost you a thing, but will help me and my channel out tremendously. Also, make sure and check out my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks provides label sets, upgrade kits, and display backdrops for Transformers toys of all types and generations. New for 2020, ToyHacks is introducing the ToyHacks Armory, where they'll be offering a variety of weapons for your favorite bots in multiple colors. Also this year, ToyHacks is introducing Robo Points. For every purchase you make, you'll earn Robo Points that you can redeem towards a voucher for future purchases. ToyHacks is a company run by collectors for collectors, so check out ToyHacks.com and make your collection stand out from the rest. And tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bot in this video is 1988's Generation 1 Pretender Beast, Catilla. Now, I got Catilla recently on eBay because this quarantine is causing me to do a lot more online shopping than I used to. I bought Gunrunner last week, got Catilla in the mail today, and Chainclaw is on the way. So it's like I did a Pretender Domino thing. But enough about that. Going on to Catilla here. Catilla appeared on the shelves in 1988, which was way too late to appear in the animated television show, though he did appear animated very briefly in his television commercial where he took on fellow pretender beast, Snarler. Catilla didn't appear at all in the Marvel comic series, but he did appear in a pretty good story out of the UK where he was actually a Decepticon and a member of the Mayhem Attack Squad. He was teamed up with fellow pretender beast Carnivac, and they in turn teamed up with the Wreckers, I think to take on Galvatron, who was doing some time hopping. Anyway, Kern Kernivac, Carnivac and Catilla here really appreciate or respected the Wreckers and decided to turn into Autobots themselves. That, of course, made a assassination squad hunt them down, and Catilla was ended up being killed by bludgeon. So it was a pretty decent story. I can't remember that much about it because I had it in trade paperback form years ago and I've lost it. I have no idea where it is. And this is one of the reasons I'm so disappointed that IDW decided not to carry on with their reprints of UK stories. So that pretty much wraps it up for the history of the bot. So let's take a closer look at Catilla himself. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. Catilla's pretender shell is that of a well-armored saber-tooth cat. And I do believe Hulk Hogan would be really fond of this one due to those bright red and yellow collars. Now, taking a closer look at the figure, you've got great molded detail all along the saber tooth cat itself. You can make out all the hair. Here on the face, you've got the teeth, the mouth, and the hair up there on the face. Moving along the armor, lots more molded details. A little bit of paint damage on this one. As I said, this is a original generation one from 1988. Now, you've got this helmet right here, nice silver helmet with more molded details and this can come off. You just snap it right off, and there is a lot more details on the tiger's face. You got the nose, the eyes. Now the eyes are painted black. It's a shame the helmet covers up so much of this detail, and that's about the only real paint applications the figure has. You got these little orange stripes on the face, the black eyes, and the pink inside the mouth. Back of the figure, he's got this silver tail for some odd reason, I don't know why the tail is silver, but lots of nice molded details on this as well. On this side, he does have his weapon that can come off. Now that's pretty much it for Catilla's pretender shell. So now let's release the robot inside. 
Now the first thing we're going to do is remove the weapon here on top. Now you have to remove the helmet in order to split apart the shell, which you've already done. We're going to take the shell, pop it in half, and the robot falls out. We'll go ahead and put the shell back together and off to the side. Now once you get Catilla out of the shell, we're going to go ahead and flip these legs up. And that way we can unfold the lower legs from underneath, flip the toes down, finish rotating the rear legs all the way around, and flip this little tail out. And there you have Catilla in his robot Sabretooth Tagger mode. Now I really like how the Pretender Beasts hide the robot versions of the shell inside. And this really isn't a bad looking saber tooth cat. Lots of nice molded details. I love the eyes. The eyes is really well painted and it's just one solid visor right across. You also got some detail, molded details right there, the whiskers, the nose. Unfortunately, the mouth does not open. Got some molded in teeth there as well. And that's really about it. Now, this Catilla figure is very plain. It did not come with any decals, but thanks to Toy Hacks, there are some on the way. Now, you can take the weapon that was on the giant pretender shell and mount it on top of Catilla. You have this peg right here that will go right there on top of his back. So now you have the pretender robot, or the transformer robot, well armed so he can go into battle with his shell. Now let's go ahead and get Catilla transformed into robot mode. We're gonna remove the weapon, fold the tail up, fold the toes up, and now you're gonna take this lower half and flip it all the way around, forming the robot legs. Now I angle these tagger legs back ever so slightly. Then on the arms, you're gonna flip out the fists, and then take the tiger head and fold down, and that's it. There is Catilla in robot mode. And that's not a bad looking robot. I love the face sculpt. Actually looks really good for a pretender. I wish it had some decals because, I mean, it looks good, lots of molded detail, but it just needs something else to pop. Articulation, the arms can go almost a complete 360. They hit those legs back there. Now the instructions always show to have the legs like this for robot mode, but that is way too much junk in the trunk as far as I'm concerned. Now you can take Catilla's weapon. Right here is a little peg on the bottom that will match up to a peg right there on the forearm. So you're going to peg that in. So now Catilla has, it looks like a fusion cannon. So it's pretty cool. I mean, it's a decent looking Transformer, one of the better pretender inner bots, in my opinion. So there we have Catilla in robot mode and Catilla's pretender shell. And now for some quick size comparisons, here is 1988's pretender beast Catilla with Generation 1 Optimus Prime, his Generation 1 Mayhem Attack Squad partner Carnivac, and, oh, wait a minute, I got the perfect comparison. By the power of Grayskull. <laughs> 1984's Battle Armor He-Man and Skeletor. Now, there's a crossover I'd love to see. The Transformers crash landing on Eternia. The Generation 1 Pretender Beast Catilla figure is actually a pretty decent Transformer. I really like the inner bot. I think the robot mode looks really good. I think the Beast alternate mode looks really good. What kills me for this figure is the Pretender shell. Now, I forgot to show this off earlier, but there is no articulation whatsoever with this pretender shell. This is just a hollow plastic statue. And another issue you really wanna watch for is when you split him apart, 
The silver tail I was talking about earlier is actually a separate piece. So you want to make sure this is not lost if you're hunting one down because that right there is one of the most expensive pieces for the figure. But all in all, it's still not a bad figure to add to your collection. Plus, those bright collars are really going to pop on your shelf. So there you go, guys. 1988 Generation 1 Pretender Beast Catilla. So, does a Generation 1 Catilla belong in your collection? This is one for the G1 or Hardcore Collectors only. I mean, this is a decent toy. The inner robot's really good. I love the bot mode. I think the bot's beast mode is really good. But the shell, the shell is lacking because the only thing it can do is this. It can sit there and that's all of its features. Now, I want to let you guys know that I do know that He-Man is owned by Mattel and Transformers are owned by Hasbro. So that is a crossover that may not happen. So... Don't be blasting me in the comments. Now, guys, if you liked what you see, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. And speaking of new reviews, as I said in the review, I've got Toy Hex decals on the way for Catilla, which means he's going to be perfect for my new series, Toy Hex Flashbacks, where I go over Toy Hex decals for Generation 1 figures. Guys, this is Patriot Prime signing out. Hoo-ah!